Good morning. Oh, show my eyes. I've just arrived at the Southern Wall Show at Newbury Racecourse in Berkshire. I'm on my own, so I'm being very brave. I'm about to go in. Got a bit of a shopping list in my head. I'm thinking autumnal vibes today. Maybe a chunky ceramic mug and a cosy autumnal pattern or kit and some autumnal themed yarn. Definitely want to get a prize for the Strictly Sock Along. Hoping to meet up with a few people that have said they're going along. My friend Sarah's going to be there somewhere. In fact, she's just messaged to say she is there. But first of all, I need to find the loose because I need a wee. It's taken me about two hours to get here from Kent. And yeah, let's go in, see what we can find. God, that was such a cheesy intro. <laughs> Okay, let's go into the Southern Wool Show here at Newbury Racecourse. I forgot to say in my introduction that I'm in the mood for finding autumnal things today. So we started off at Wensleydale Long Wool, all the way from the Yorkshire Dales and selling yarn from the rare breed Wensleydale sheep. I thought that was a nice autumnal looking hat and some lovely autumnal colours all together there. And next to them was Eliza Conway um, selling balls and cones of pure wool and also a table which was a treasure trove of vintage tools and bits and bobs. And I love this bowl, this goldfish bowl of knitted fish. So cute. So my plan as I look around is to keep my eyes peeled for all things autumny and cosy and to get me in the autumn mood i'm hoping to find myself a chunky mug maybe some autumnal wool and definitely a prize for the strictly sock along this is emily cross ceramics they're based in bath in somerset and they bring handmade handmade ceramic yarn bowls needle keepers and mugs and so on i really loved this mug i loved the colors but it was a little bit too big and this was the perfect size but i wasn't so in love with the colors although they are really beautifully autumnal. Blue Fern Yarns is Shannon and Tom from Norfolk and they sell hand dyed yarn, project bags, stitch markers and the whole shebang. Shannon also sells patterns on her website and has a knitting podcast on YouTube too and I'll make sure I link everyone I talk about and everyone you see in the description box underneath. So they had this really clever idea of a mini's lucky dip and Sarah and I both did it. She took one from the top and I took one right from the bottom. And although they weren't all the same in those little packets, we still managed to be lucky dip twins and get the same yarn. So while we are looking at this gorgeous set of autumnal minis, I'm going to warn you that there are some pumpkins coming up there is no pattern for them but she is going to be writing one up at some point in the future so keep an eye on her instagram because they are gorgeous truly hooked yarns is verity from nottingham and she sells a stunning range of hand dyed yarn her stall is always so colorful and wonderful to look at like me she started with crochet and this really shows in the way she includes samples of knit and crochet for her colorways she's also written two books on knitting and crochet and designs patterns which we're having a good rummage through here i love the neck lines on her pullovers because they're nice and wide Totally different. Like some, not all yarns are equal when it comes to no. crochet. <laughs> Ellie Langley lives in the North Pennines and has a small flock of rescue sheep. I was speaking to her about her rescue sheep and it was so lovely. She uses their fleece uh, for felt, yarn and her gorgeous hats as well. And because they're her, her flock, she can write on the labels exactly who the yarn is from, which is a really lovely touch. Rosie's Moments is a yarn show staple uh, at the UK shows, and it's, there's always plenty of lovely colours to be found here, plus gifts and notions and kits and all kinds. I loved this autumn skein of yarn. 
Every skein has a little bag of lavender attached, so it all smells lovely. And I love these colourwork pumpkin socks. Oh, more autumnal yarn. New Forest Mohair sell yarn mainly from their flock of Angora goats in the New Forest, where they also run classes on Angora goat keeping. I love these little mini boucle mohair yarn balls, which I can't help but keep calling boucle, because that's how it's spelled. <laughs> Discovering a litmus cow here at the Ducky Darling stall. Hayley dyes the most gorgeous yarns, which she dyes at home in Derbyshire. She has some stunning autumn colours on her stall. This one was absolutely gorgeous. Oh, and this is Sarah putting them with the green. She's obsessed with green, Sarah. Autumn red. You can't get more autumnal than a nice autumn red. And dragons are autumnal too. More pumpkins. I was very delighted with the, the level of pumpkin displays going on at the show this year. So by this point, we were ready for a cup of tea and a muffin. So we headed upstairs and the cater, the space for sitting down for cups of tea and coffee is really great. There's always room. Uh, the selection isn't that great, but we found a muffin to share and a decent cup of tea, so it was okay. Internet Cafe Yarns stock loads of different commercial yarns, such as West Yorkshire Spinners, Opal, uh, and they include many discontinued and unusual ones as well. And there was lots of excitement around the new West Yorkshire Spinners gingerbread yarn, which is this year's Christmas colourway. And you can see the reason why it's so cute. It looks like it's got actual little candy canes on it. It's so clever. It was lovely to see John and Claire of Bird Street Yarns here, all the way from Bristol. They run Bird Street Yarns together with John doing most of the dyeing, I think, and their yarn is so beautiful. They have a real colour palette that just you can just tell it's by them when you see it. And this gorgeous autumnal bouquet of minis. I nearly bought this. This is the problem with editing a video about a yarn show, is you see all the things you should have bought but didn't. Regret, regret. I need to get a prize for Street Soccer as well. I think that's okay. Because it's not on every strand, is it? So No. Just get the occasional bit. You don't make, you made a garment of sleeves and everything and it's so heavy. Oh, that's lovely. Now arrived at Skeen Queen and I checked with Rachel of Skeen Queen and she confirmed it is indeed Skeen Queen to rhyme. Although she did admit she says skein when she's talking about skeins of yarn. So the, uh, the debate continues, skein or skein. They're fairly local, it's Rachel and Eliza and they die in Berkshire which is where Newbury is. And if you're wondering about Sarah's beautiful top that you've probably caught a glimpse of, it's knitted using Skeen Queen uh, in the Peach Bellini colourway. And the pattern is the Carla Tea by Megan Nodecker of Pip and Pin. And it's the next garment on my knit list. I've got the pattern. I'll link it underneath. More bouquets of autumnal minis. So this is a special stall. Knitted Knockers is a charity which makes free of charge prostheses for women who are post mastectomy or lumpectomy surgery. 
Uh, they're knitted with cotton by volunteers. They're lightweight, they're soft against the skin and breathable. And they also make a version suitable for swimming as well. So if you're in the UK and you can help in any way or fundraise, their details are in the description box underneath. And I bought one of these little knocker key rings for my friend who's going through chemotherapy for breast cancer at the moment. Hot Butter Yarns was a new one on me and they had some gorgeous colour work patterns and kits and textured patterns. It's run by Jackie and she's from Skipton and we were absolutely mesmerised by the collection of sample sweaters she had with her. They were all gorgeous, the colours were gorgeous, the patterns were gorgeous. This is the thing with yarn shows is it's so inspiring to be able to see the yarns knit up, to be able to pick up and feel and see patterns which are otherwise just 2D photographs on a screen to actually be able to see how they look and feel and fit. It's so inspiring. It's one of my favourite parts of being at a yarn show. So this is Wool Zone, lots of gorgeous commercial yarn here. And the theme of the show for Sarah and I, as we were wandering around, seemed to be DK socks. There seemed to be DK socks everywhere. And we were beginning to become convinced that the yarn universe was telling us something. Maybe DK socks was something that we needed to do. Go on, Sarah, you know you want to buy it. She did. Here's the beautiful West Yorkshire Spinners Ginger Bread colourway again. It was on quite a few stalls, actually. Why didn't I buy any? This is another new-to-me dyer, Bettina at Tyne and Floyd. She sells hand-dyed yarn and fibre, including a lot of plant fibres. And the colours were lovely, and I really like the texture of that scheme. Naomi is from Wales and she runs Wonderful Wool, selling hand-dyed yarn and fibre in such a beautiful selection of colours. And look, of course, I found the perfect autumn scheme here. And there goes my battery. So we were absolutely famished by this point and it was time to grab some lunch. It was almost two o'clock, parked very close to my car. Just popped out to get me lunch. And me and Sarah are going to go and meet Kate, who is a lovely teacher. She's here with her mum and she's been a lovely supporter of this channel, um, donating quite a few prizes for the Strictly Sock Along over the years. So I'm really looking forward to meeting her. Hang on, let me turn it around. <laughs> oh, that's it. The photogenic side, yeah, the photogenic side of the game. <laughs> who knew that was even a thing? Yeah, yeah, so that's definitely good film. Is it? Yes, okay. it is. Again, they're not my colours. No, well, I can't yeah, usual colours, yeah, but they go really nicely together, yeah. don't they? Oh, well, that's so you, funny. That is hilarious. <laughs> so back into the yarn show we go after that lovely bit of lemon cake. These gorgeous stitch markers are by Dina of Dina's Home of Craft. She's based in Hales Owen in Birmingham, which is where my sister lives. She sells gorgeous hand-dyed yarn. There's some lovely autumnal looking skeins here. I love the name of this one. That's my jam. <laughs> I really like the names of yarns. I like to see what people come up with. And it was here that I found my first Strictly prize, this beautiful Moulin Rouge colourway. Here we are at Woolly Chic. Woolly Chic, Woolly Chic, Woolly Chic. Anyway, she's Helen and she sells British wool and her new heart spun yarn, which is made from Blueface Leicester and Tensile, which comes from wood pulp. Her yarn is mostly sourced from her family's Dorset and Ryland flocks in Wales. And she also sells organic cotton that supports small farmers in India and Tanzania. 
This was hand dyed by River Knit. She collaborates with a few dyers and look at this gorgeous top. It's, this is Helen's pattern and the yarn that's dyed by River Knit. It's so pretty. Yarns you like is Marcia and she sells such gorgeous plant-based fibres. I actually bought four balls of her recycled denim uh, earlier this year at the Waltham Abbey Wool Show. And seeing this now makes me really want to dig those out and get them made up into something. The yarns that she sells are mostly recyclable, vegan, they're antibacterial, they're breathable, and the bio bamboo that you just saw there is the softest, drapiest thing I've ever touched. And bonus, I got to meet Gail of Made by Gail on Instagram, who was helping on the store, and we have been following each other on Instagram forever. And it was so nice to finally meet her in person. The crochet chain, all things crochet, yarn, tools, books, patterns, kits. Uh, she also sells her pattern for the crochet version of the Sinister Cattigan by oh, Anne Caitlin Bieg. I'm saying that wrong, aren't I? Anyway, it's amazing. Look at it. I didn't get a chance to chat to Emma at Pineapple Fibre Art, but I was absolutely fascinated by her store. In fact, it was the last one I stopped at today because I just couldn't walk past it. She sells kits for crochet mandalas inspired by vintage doilies. I'm definitely adding one of these kits to my Christmas list. Oh, I'm back in the car, which is very hot. It's been quite an overcast day, but when the sun's out, it is very warm. I'm going to go to Sainsbury's. Well, I should say it's quarter to four. Sarah and I have just given up because we had got to a point. We haven't even made it. There's two big areas in the uh, the Southern Wall Show. The grandstand and then another building. And we hadn't even fully made it around the grandstand since, what, half past ten this morning. And it's now nearly four. So, and we were just looking at yarn thinking we can't see it anymore. We became overwhelmed. So we called it a day and we're going to come back tomorrow bright and fresh uh, and raring to go again. On the way out, it's quite bright actually, I'm just going to put my sunglasses on. <laughs> on the way out of the door, we bumped into Jane. Hi Jane. And her friend, uh, which was lovely because she was one of the people that uh, had connected on Instagram to say, oh, hopefully we'll, we'll bump into each other. And we did right at the end. So it was really lovely to meet you, Jane. And I promise not to comment on my hair. <laughs> we, were, we were laughing about me always complaining about my hair. So I'm going to go to Sainsbury's now to get some ingredients. I'm... Uh, uh, Sarah, my friend Sarah, who I've been walking around with today, she's going out for dinner tonight with a couple of the vendors and they was very kindly invited me along, but I have declined because there's something very special I want to do when I get back to uh, my set mum's village, which I shall show you when I get there. So right now I'm going to Sainsbury's to pick up some ingredients and then I'll show you what I bought when I get back to my step mum's house. come into the living room because it's a bit less echoey than the main sort of kitchen, lounge, dining, open plan bit. So hopefully it's not too echoey and hopefully I'm in focus. It is now about five o'clock. I popped to Sainsbury's to get some ingredients to make my dinner. I'm going to pop some leftovers in the freezer for my stepmom as well because I know she likes this particular dish. So I thought I'd show you very quickly what I picked up on my first day and then I've got a couple of important things to do. So the first thing I've got to do is go and raid the pear tree and the apple tree that she's got in the side garden and 
uh, pick a load of those because I know she won't be using them so I'm going to go and steal them. And then I have bought a bottle of red wine with me. I don't generally drink red wine uh, but I, my dad did and this was my dad's house and he lived in this village for a long long time and he loved his house and after he died in 2018, uh, a little bit after he died, my stepmom had a bench, a memorial bench put in outside the village hall, uh, which is about a 10, 15 minute walk from here. Um, and it's a, a lovely little spot overlooking like a big area of green. And it's got a little plaque um, with his name on it and everything. So, and there's even some of his ashes sprinkled underneath that bench, just a little bit. And uh, I'm gonna take him up a glass of wine. So I'm gonna, I've got my little uh, bottle of water that I've had today, so I'm gonna empty that out, put a little bit of wine in there so I don't look like a complete wino hulking up a whole bottle of wine. And I'm gonna sit and I'm gonna pour a little bit under his bench for him and I'm gonna have a little sip of it with him and have, just say hello, uh, which might sound utterly bonkers, but I'm looking forward to doing it. But before I do those things, I'm going to show you uh, the bits that I picked up today. As a general rule, I like to do a lap of every, everything and then make decisions. But there were a few things that I, I was weak <laughs> and I had to buy them. So you would have seen earlier in the vlog uh, that Sarah and I both did a lucky dip at Blue Fern Yarns and I took one right from the bottom. I rummaged right to the bottom and they weren't all the same. They were all different. And Sarah took one from the top and we got the same colour. So we are yarn twins, lucky dip twins. Uh, the stitch markers were different. So that's from Blue Fern Yarns. Now, I hadn't heard of Blue Fern Yarns, but Sarah had, and apparently she has a podcast. So I shall link that underneath. I shall find it, watch it, and link it underneath because that was really, really cute. And this little colourway is called Mint on their Platinum Sock Base, which is 75-25 Superwash Merino Nylon. Next, I saw that the Knitter, knit, knit, blah, 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 Knitted Knockers store was there, which is actually a charity uh, and they work with breast cancer uh, patients and survivors um, uh, making knitted knitted boobs. Let's just say knitted boobs for uh, women who have had mastectomies. I'll put all their information, I'll put all the information of everything I talk about underneath and all of the shops and stalls that I stopped by. I'll put all, I'll link to them all because they were all, everybody we have spoken to today, um, all the stall holders have been utterly lovely, so knowledgeable so lovely to talk to i feel like so in every time i go to a yarn show i discover about 85 different patterns that i now want to make so they're, they're so inspirational to talk to so knitted knockers uk is a registered charity which makes free of charge for thesis for ladies post mastectomy and lumpectomy surgery uh, so they do that free and then they do fundraising on top of it to, to raise money for what they do and one of the things they do is they sell little knitted knockers as a key ring. Now I have a very dear friend who um, has just started on breast cancer treatment and I think that she will get a little kick out of this, um, a lucky boob. <laughs> so I choose this one um, and as you can see it's got some piercings. <laughs> It's got the breast cancer ribbon and then that little tab there says um, made with love and then it says knitted knockers uh, uk.com on the ribbon and I'm going to give that to my friend who's had her first of six round of chemo now and it didn't go well she was horribly ill and this is going to be her lucky boo but I think that she will find that very fun and then after that I bought a skein of yarn. So Sarah and I um, were both, so Sarah and I went round together and we'll, we'll probably meet, we're, we're going to meet up tomorrow to go round again or to do the bits we haven't already seen. And she was helping me look for uh, musical or music or dance related names of yarns so that I could get some as a prize for the Strictly Sock Along. And it was Sarah that discovered Moulin Rouge and it was at Dina's Home of Crafts. So I spoke to them as well, and she was absolutely lovely to talk to. I, I hadn't remembered seeing them before. And they're also gonna be at Unravel uh, next week or the week after in Farnham. And they're gonna be at the Knitting and Stitching Show at Ali Pally in October. Look at that. It's so gorgeous. So like I say, it's called Moulin Rouge and this, 
unfortunately is not for me. It's for a prize for the Strictly Soft Cologne and it's beautiful. And then I bought something that's completely not yarn related and this is going to be very difficult to show you properly until I'm at home because I need to film the back of actually no that's ridiculous I should be able to film the back of my own head I bought a butterfly hair clip so she was selling them they're hand beaded in South Africa by women sorry in South Africa to support their family so they're fair trade it's butterfly hair clip sorry and the lady on the stall showed me how to do it and I have really thick hair, so did my daughters, so I didn't think it was going to work for me, but I will show you. She gave me a lesson in how to do it. I hope I've done that right. So this feels really secure now, like it's comfy and it doesn't feel like my hair's going anywhere. Obviously I need to road test it at work or something. So now let's try and film the back of my own head. Can you see it? Have I done it okay? <laughs> oh look, I can see I've got a bit here. So I've got my hair clip. Just leave that in whilst I talk to you. And that was it for day one, but I have got lots of things in mind for day two. Um, I did see a lovely ceramic mug. I saw so many autumnal things. Uh, Sarah got really excited about the new West Yorkshire Spinners gingerbread yarn, which is this year's Christmas yarn, I have to admit, very gorgeous. And lots of ideas for patterns, uh, which I will have covered in the vlog that you've just seen. Anyway, I'm going to stop yabbering on because I've already been talking for nearly 10 minutes. 10 minutes! I've still got to film tomorrow, so let's go and do the other bits and then I will see you tomorrow morning for the Southern Wool Show, day two. Okay, it's Sunday and I was so excited to get back to the yarn show I didn't film a thing before I got here. So first up we're starting off in the other room that we didn't make it to yesterday with Coastal Colours. They dye yarns with a range of different blends of bases. They all feel really luxurious and the store is like a cave of yarn treasure all sparkling under the lights. It's amazing. Mulberry silk and yak. You can only imagine how drapey that was. The threshing barn was a dangerous place. They sell all things spinning, weaving, dyeing, felting. And when you see things like this, you start to think you could take up a new hobby. Weaving looks a little bit tempting. Very dangerous. Snuggly Stars Yarn. So I was really looking forward to visiting this store. I follow Gemma on Instagram and she does the most gorgeous hand dyed yarns and she also sells pins and notions and all kinds of lovely crafty treasures. This is a Jennifer Steingast pattern. It just looks lovely with that variegated yarn in the, in the fern colour work there. I don't know why I'm tidying up the minis there. This is her Halloween yarn for this year and we finally succumbed and each bought a DK skein of it for socks. Temporal Spin is 
Rianne, and she dyes yarns inspired by science fiction, fantasy, and popular culture. So geeky yarn. She also sells Welsh fibre yarn and project bags. And this is yarn with Lurex in it, which I'd never seen before, but there were a couple of stalls selling this type of yarn with Lurex in. I don't know what you'd use it for, but it's very pretty. And I very much appreciated the Red Dwarf yarn. I was a huge Red Dwarf fan in my teens. I was very tempted by it. Pippin Yarns is Emma and she's from Kent, like me. She lives in beautiful Birchington-on-Sea. In fact, I first came across her yarn in the fabulous Petticoat Lane Emporium in Ramsgate. So I was really looking forward to meeting her and seeing her, a whole stall of her yarn because it really is beautiful. Cobnut is such a Kentish thing. The county of Kent is famous for its cobnuts. More gorgeous autumn yarn. Look at that blue. Sewing Bee by D is Denise and she sells loads of gorgeous handmade bags and notions, hook rolls and other lovely things. And she was there with Jess, who's been crafts a lot, who sells these gorgeous intricate beaded stitch markers and also hand dyed yarn. Look at the ghost. She said it takes hours for her to make these. I was really looking forward to saying hello to Almas as I followed her for a long time on Instagram, Almas of Witchcrafty Lady. She sells mill dyed British yarn, hand spun yarn, fibre and spinning bits as well as handmade items like scrunchies. And I'm always fascinated by her spinning and she kindly gave me a mini lesson in using a drop spindle, which led to this. And this may have come home with me. Now at Edelweiss Fibres, and that's Mariette. She's originally from South Africa, but she's now based in Scotland. She sells hand-dyed yarn in the most amazing colours. I love this one called Autumn Cliché. That looks perfect. I should have bought it. And that's on Merino Linen. And I really love this single malt colour. And here it is knit up into the Lady Whistledown sweater by Twinset and Pearl. It looks so lovely. What a nice combination of pattern and yarn. And this is the Captiva crop by Laura Murphy. And it's made with her merino linen singles, again, in the Peach Melba colourway. Mariette was an absolute delight to chat to and she had some amazing colours and she was so inspiring. Adventures in Yarn Craft is Laura and she had lots of lovely hand dyed yarn here and really fun needle stoppers and notions. Some of these might have come home with me which I will show you towards the end of this vlog. Gorgeous autumn colours. She also sells kits and patterns. Now pumpkin warning, there are pumpkins coming up. The pattern is available, £1.50 on her website and I believe that was her chunky sweater weather colourway. The crafty bird is Robin. She sells handmade faux fur pom-poms and I love them. I just can't get enough of her stall. It's like a pet shop. <laughs> I have a few already so not buying one today. But we had a good look around the store at her hand-dyed yarn and kits and patterns and got lots of ideas and inspiration. Okay. 
All wool that ends wool. Bright hand eyed yarn including lots of self striping by Emma from Manchester. And look, more Lurex. It's popping up again. She also sells uh, needles and notions. And again, something might have come home with me from this store, which I'll show you later. Dragon Hill Studio is Andrew and Sharon and they're quite well known now for their amazing array of self-striping yarn. They also sell patterns, kits and notions and Sharon is a Tunisian crochet expert or advocate and has some gorgeous clever uh, Tunisian patterns. That first one there was the Alan Bay shawl, that's the crochet advent wrap and this one is the Furnham shawl. And this is the journey wrap, joinery wrap. It's a Tunisian pattern which very cleverly makes use of their self-striping yarn. Felt Fusion is Shadow and she's known for her brightly coloured hand-dyed yarn. Some beautiful autumn colours here as well. And she now also has Fae Folk fibres which is inspired by myths, legends, stories and history of the British Isles. Really lovely, gentle, natural looking colours. I really liked this range. Bluebell Yarns is Becca and she dyes on British non-superwash yarn. Really lovely selection of autumnal colours and I loved this chunky hat pumpkin spice can't get better than that for an autumn name and our last stop of the day and of the weekend was Bellica Yarns who is Laura and she was so lovely to talk to and she actually stopped us as we were walking past as she had heard rumours there was a lady walking around with a gorgeous crochet top on and that was Sarah who I was walking with and the top she was wearing I didn't actually film stupidly but it's the Amma top and I'll link the pattern underneath perfect ending on this gorgeous autumn skein of yarn. I am home from my amazing weekend at the Southern Wall Show. Dinner's in the oven. We're having fajitas. So I'm coming up to the bedroom to show you my haul, as the YouTubers call it. I don't know what that noise is. The windows are open because um, it's really warm. It's much warmer here than it was in Newbury. So I've driven back to Kent. It took about just under two hours because there was a problem on the M25. And it's much warmer here by about three or four degrees than it was up in Newbury. It was, it was a bit of a shock. It felt like I'd come back from a, like a, a colder country abroad or something. Okay, so my day two haul. So we headed straight for the other room. So they've got the main grandstand and then there's another building as well. And we went straight there, Sarah and I, this morning. We met up again. Uh, it was brilliant. It was just another day of talking to so many interesting people and having really, really lovely in-depth conversations about knitting, about yarn, about patterns, about crochet. Tunisian crochet, about YouTube, social media. It was just, uh, honestly, wonderful. I feel on such a high after such a wonderful weekend. And I'm not somebody who really thrives off of um, lots of people. I sometimes, I'm quite introverted in that way. But honestly, I feel like I have been um, given energy by the experience of this weekend rather than having to um, recharge, if that makes sense. So. It's the power of yarn, or yarny axe, as Dan, my husband, calls us. Lovely Gemma at Snuggly Stars Yarn did a collaboration with Lula Bella Knits. So there's a pattern here for double knit socks, and double knit socks seem to speak to us everywhere we went, Sarah and I, and we decided that we are both going to knit the duvet day socks and Gemma remembered that I really liked this pattern particularly particularly because a pound from the sale of every pattern goes to Crohn's and Colitis UK which is a, a, a very close to my heart a charity very close to my heart because I had colitis for many many years from the age of about 17 or 18 until I had my large intestine removed in 2012 10 years ago so that means a lot and the the 
pattern has the most wonderful texture on it. And we both bought a skein of Gemma's Halloween yarn for this year. It is called Vintage Vampire. It's DK weight. Uh, she does it in other weights as well. And it's 7525 Merino Nylon, Superwash Merino Nylon. And hopefully the light coming in the window is gonna do it justice rather than unjustice. It's so pretty and she had a sample which you would have seen made up and I really liked it. So that's Vintage Vampire by Snuggly Stars Yarns. And Sarah and I are gonna have a little pre-Halloween knit along for that. I also wanted to get a little project bag to go with the yarn prize that I bought, the Moulin Rouge that I got from Dina's, Dina's Home of Crafts. And I found this at Bellica Yarns and we had a lovely chat uh, with the girl at Bellica Yarns whose name has just left my perimenopausal brain. Oh, it's gonna really bug me. Anyway, I'm sure you're, if you know of them, I'm sure you're all shouting her name at me. So I've got this gorgeous bag to go with it and I don't know if you can see, but the mermaids have all got sparkly hair so we have named them, or oh, you can see the shadow of the camera on the bed there. <laughs> shadow not included. So we've named the mermaids Disco Mermaids, which of course makes it strictly themed immediately. It's got beautiful blue lining and the purple there. And I thought that went beautifully with the Moulin Rouge. So this is the Moulin Rouge Disco Mermaid prize package for one of the prizes for the Strictly Sock Along. I then got some needle stoppers because Sarah was talking about these and these were the cutest things I've ever seen and I've just realised they look very funny like that on the card. I clearly got my mind in the gutter. Um, yes, yeah, so they're donuts. <laughs> they're donut needle stoppers and you put your needle, there's a little hole here on the side and it tells you on the back that they fit 2.75 to 6 millimeter needles. They'll be perfect for the needles that I've currently got on my litmus cow because I do have a bit of a problem with them, Keeps the stitches keep sliding off. So when I'm not working on it, I can pop these on the end of my needles and that will hopefully save the day. And they are super cute. So I'm really pleased with those. And then, oh, now I can't remember where, oh, sorry, I should have said, I got these from Adventures in Yarn Craft. She was absolutely lovely as well. I mean, just take it as read that everyone I talk about was absolutely lovely today. They were all so helpful chatty, knowledgeable, everything. It was a wonderful weekend. And that's everyone, even like the people who I haven't bought from, because wouldn't it be wonderful to buy from absolutely everybody. Uh, so this was from, oh, I'm gonna have to put it on the screen. I'm gonna have to go back and look at my footage. And that is because they had to emergency pack up a whole new load of these because they sold out yesterday. So they don't have labels on them. <laughs> which she would say, oh, I was just really quickly packaging them all up last night to put some more out. And this is something that Sarah recommended. And you get them in different sizes, as in different widths, in the same way that you get different widths of needle. And they've got a tiny, tiny little hole, <laughs> which is gonna be impossible to film and get in focus. But trust me, there's a tiny little hole. It's like a tiny little tube. And you pop your needle in it, and that means you can really quickly slide stitches onto this, which is 150, I've got three here. One's 150 centimetres, and then I think two of them are 75. So you can put your stitches on waist yarn in order to try it on. So if you are knitting a jumper, you can test the length and see how it's sitting. In the same way you would use waist yarn uh, to thread through, say, the armholes, to see how your arms are looking. Um, and you use this instead of waist yarn and it's easier because of the way you can slide the the stitches. So I'm really looking forward to trying this out on my next knitted garment. And then finally, I think quite possibly, I mean it's hard to choose favourites isn't it when it comes to yarn and crafty things but I think this might be the favourite thing that I bought the whole weekend. And I broke the rule, sorry, Battery went. <laughs> anyway, this is my most favourite purchase, the whole show. And I broke the rule, which is don't go to a yarn show and end up buying something for a new craft that you do not have time for. It's <laughs> exactly what I did, but it wasn't my fault. We're gonna blame Almas at Witchy Crafty Lady. It was completely her fault because I have tried drop spindling 
quite a few times before. I even did a class at the Southern Wall Show on it and quite enjoyed it and then did it for a bit, got bored and put it away, then did it for a bit, got bored and put it away, wasn't sure I was doing it completely right, lost my confidence, got bored. And I'm just doing it with plain undyed fleece. It's in a box and I haven't looked at it in way over a year, possibly two. But Alma showed me again. She's often said on Instagram that she's happy to show that, you know, help with any questions. So she showed me, she let me have a go on her one that she was working on. And it looked so beautiful, the yarn she was doing and the fluff turning into the yarn. It was, it was like so magical the way it transformed. So of course I figured that must be the problem. I need to spin with my drop spindle with beautiful hand dyed fleece. Fleece? Is that what you call it? Fluff? Cloud? <laughs> I don't know. But this is what I got. So it's Witchy Crafty Lady. There we go. And this is Super Wash Polworth, 98 grams. It looks like, to me, autumn berries. And I cannot wait to get started and see how it transforms. So that is all my purchases and I will do a little one out when I change my battery over. I changed it for another one that had run out. <laughs> so that one just ran out. So I had to run downstairs and get one that had already fully charged. I think this is a sign that I need to stop talking, put my pyjamas on and go downstairs and pour a post yarn weekend glass of wine. <laughs> so I really hope that you've enjoyed this weekend with me and seeing every, everything at the Southern Wall Show. Thank you for joining me and I'll see you again in the next podcast very soon. Bye.